Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. I'd like to welcome y'all to the show. Yeah, right. yeah. Hello, yeah. Blackbird, y'all. Let's get to a little Blackbird by your studio code. Fly Black me away. On this Monday. To a better day. I got a nice topic. What a piece of that. Seems like we under attack. Gotta, Gotta watch, watch my own back, back and back. back. 400 years of oppression make you study your lesson, make you turn your mind into a weapon. Universe is a session, settle down and teach, count your blessings. If only a few of them might reach. Praying to the God, I don't self destroy. Black and black crime and good food. Talking real life mission strictly for the youth. Third eye vision, cause the power is true. Don't let nobody stop you. Stack, look, see what you mind. For take, 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 aim, and shoot, and that's true. Come on. Blackbirds is coming for me. Yeah. They're gonna take me away. And set me free. Now, 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 now. I see. Blackbirds is coming for me. Yeah. Welcome to the show, look, that was Blackbirds by yours truly, something that, you know, was on my heart, I had to do, you know, Blackbirds coming from you. But the topic we're talking about tonight is reverse integration. And the the picture that accompanies this particular uh, show with Cedric and the entertainer on his new show, uh, the neighborhood is an example of that uh, integration, of that reverse integration. I want to go back to Malcolm X days, Nation of Islam, the Army Elijah Muhammad. They asked Malcolm, uh, why wasn't he um, uh, rallying the troops to fight for uh, civil rights and basically integration and Malcolm was explaining that I'm 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 for uh, segregation. I'm I'm for separate, but equal. I'm not for integration. He was like, "Why would the uh, chickens integrate with the wolf? You know, wh- why would you integrate with the wolf? It, w- what sense would that make, right?" And at the time, I guess it was it was before his time. We didn't understand. Uh, you, you know, every every person black had heard the joke that uh, we integrated because the white man's ice was colder than the black man's ice, you know. And, you know, the civil rights leaders and uh, the black leaders who were for the integration, they didn't take into account the, the, the words and the wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad when he was saying that uh, he laid it out when he stated that the white man is the devil. And at that time, a lot of people was like, well, why would you say something like that, right? But then, okay, let's look at the actions. We'd say in uh, slavery. We'd say not allowing uh, the right of expression, not allowing the the, the freedom uh, to pursue happiness, not allowing the right to read or write. I mean, it was so, it was just a, an obstacle that uh, blacks in America had to go through. And that's why I understand the ADOS movement. I understand the fight for reparations. Uh, some clarity needs to be made upon uh, which black and what black you're talking about is black. Is black is black, black is black, as black, or is it separation of what's black and not black? Is the Caribbean brothers and sisters, uh, this the melanated Caribbean brothers and sisters, are they not black? And did did they not take part of uh, slavery when the slaves was brought to America's front of Caribbeans? Uh, as one of the first stops by the slave masters and picking up slaves, so we all we all that has to be addressed. But I'm pretty sure you have capable minds that um, looking into that issue. But if you notice throughout America, 
there's this reverse integration where whites are now moving into black neighborhoods. They want to be a part of the black experience. They move or sending their kids to all black high schools, to predominantly black colleges, to HBCUs. They're getting involved in um, the rap game, uh, anything that blacks created. And now black people are like, oh, wait a minute, wait, what? You know, you, you go in some black neighborhoods and you seeing white families walking their dog at night in the hood in black restaurants. And they're building high rises. Some may say, well, that's gentrification. I call it reverse integration. They're integrating the black neighborhoods and black people are not liking that because um, the the attitude that's coming along with it. I mean, whites are bringing their dr- druggies, their drug addicts. You, you will see them in the, you see the guy's shirts off, long hair, some flip flops sitting on the park bench, you know, I mean, looking strung out every bit of a hippie. And it's like the black kids who've been uh, born there, third and fourth generations, like, oh, my, who is that? What's going on? I mean, what can you do? Now you don't want them in your school. The attitude is there. The hints of racism is starting to come. The And it's like, wow, man, reverse integration right in the black community, right in the colleges and and you know and the thing about it is though, I'm gonna show you how peaceful and caring and loving black people are. When whites wanna come to an all black school, white people do not need the aid of the military. You don't need the National Guards out making sure that your white kid will be safe integrating into an all black school and black people not standing outside throwing bottles and calling uh your white kids your cracker ass cracker they ain't doing none of that they they might grin and bury like oh man damn they overrunning our neighborhood but they ain't but white people don't care they move right on in walk their dogs right down the block you know, all up in the restaurant. You know, telling the, the telling the chef, uh, um, uh, uh, um, staff person, uh, can you tell the chef just can he cut back on on the salt and the seasoning sauce? It's you know, a little too spicy for my gut. You know, uh, can you change that menu a little bit? You know, you know, uh, you know, I'm more of a Martin Luther King fan. Can you? Take Malcolm off the wall, you know. You know, I, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable. You know what I mean? You know, the whole scope, <laughs> the whole scope is changing. The whole dynamics is changing. But part of that is due to our unwillingness to heed the word and messages when our greats, we ignored our greats, you know, we really did. Ignored Garvey. We let them uh, trump up charges on Garvey, get him deported. We let them keep you away from Army Elijah Muhammad. You scared of him. You wouldn't even go nowhere near Army Elijah Muhammad. Noble Dry Lee. You weren't getting into Moorish signs. You thought that was some kind of. But you, 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 I guess some blacks felt like, well, if white people disagreed with some leaders, then it's best that black people stay away from those particular leaders when you would have to understand that, of course, they're not going to want you to go nowhere near anything that would condemn them. Well, it was... It's ridiculous to let an open oppressor dictate where you should and you shouldn't go, and you actually follow the advice of your open oppressor. It's mind-boggling, but it just shows you how powerful the after effects of slavery was.
It was, it's, I mean, we still trying to shed the remnants of slavery from our backs in 2019. Um, yeah, I'm baffled, you know. I want them blackbirds fly me somewhere that's peaceful, that's relaxing, that's safe. I mean, who, that a place where people know who they are, they know their identities, and they're proud of who they are. They're proud of the melanin in their skin. They're proud of their black beauty. They enjoying life. I mean, I, am I am I sounding like I'm talking about a utopia or something? Is that too far or too much to ask for? You know, hey, it is what it is. But what I'm saying is, if you don't watch it, we're going through the same thing that whites were going through in the 60s. The only difference is, is that we, we're we not putting up a big fight about it. I don't know if we laid down or if we are just that peaceful and loving type of people to where we welcome in Everyone, even at our detriment, knowing that we won't have it anymore. But the sacrifice to see others happy and enjoying where we stay means so much to some for that brief moment in time to see smiles on white people's face, maybe some feel like it was all worth it. You know, hey, if I can greet this white family and their children walking down the street with their dog in an all-black community, and I step over to the side and say, how you doing? And they look at you and be like, yeah, whatever's wrong, keep going. You know what I mean, yeah, whatever. Yeah, pretty soon we're gonna take all. It's gonna be ours. We, you don't understand. We're on a campaign to move you out. We want to be closer to downtown, our jobs. You know what I'm saying? The inner city. Hey, you had it long enough. You know, we're gonna integrate. We're gonna put our kids in your school, and we're gonna change programs, and we're gonna weed you out, and you know we're gonna raise taxes up, and you're not gonna be able to stay next to these high rises. We're gonna move you out, then we're gonna knock down your old homes, and you come back five years later, you're not gonna even recognize that this once was a black neighborhood. You know what? We, matter of fact, we'll change the name names of the places. We might even rearrange street signs and change it up. You know, just just to get rid of your memory that you were ever here. We're gonna change all. We're gonna change everything around. That's what they're saying. That's what, no, that's what they're doing. And then you say, well, okay, okay, okay. And you go talk to your black officials, black leaders. Hey, uh, black leaders. What what's going on? You know, I'm I'm seeing more. It's like we we've been taking over. What's what's going on? You know, they they shutting down grocery stores. They're uh, you know changing systems that we created that our forefathers and grandfathers uh, put into place. Uh, these are starting to change. I mean, who's fighting back? What's going on? What's what's really happening? And and this is the the famous line for our politicians. Look. When y'all voted me in, you didn't ask me to do nothing. So I did nothing. Now you want to come around here crying about why I didn't do nothing? You voted me in and and, I, and you didn't demand anything of me. And the people saying, well, because we thought you had our best interest in heart that you was, was going to speak for us. Yeah, but I'm not. But you got to remember, they're not going to think for you. See, that's how that's the scapegoat. I'm, I didn't do anything because you didn't ask me to do anything. So I'm over here cutting deals, making money. You know, uh, you know, they came with some money and was like, hey, uh, we want to build over here. Who owns this uh, real estate? Can you uh, get me on the inside? Oh, yeah, well, so-and-so own it, man. But I doubt they say, you know, it's been in his family for generations, in the, you know, in this community. And we'll, well, I tell you what, we'll double it. Well, come on in. Yeah, well, you know, we'll, 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 we'll wait for a minute. We'll give it two weeks. And if anybody acquires about it or protests, then, you know, we might can't do the deal. But yet, at the same time, they're not telling you that the deal is on the table. 
you going or you 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 going like uh everything is normal you going about your day you know you're not thinking about it you're not researching you're not checking to see what's going on in your community they sitting back waiting and you know they they they'll put a post uh they'll put a text they'll put something on social media uh, we got a company interested in buying lot so and so and so and so street and that's it then he gets his cut. They make the sale. You see a, 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 a high rise going up. And you're like, who sold that? But hey, man, I put it on social media and, and, and said that somebody was interested in buying a lot. Nobody responded. Hey, it's too late now. The deal done. You know, and it's, you know, you know how the game is being played. And it's being played that way. Oh, you know why? Because there's no unity. There's the, the, see who, the streets at one point controlled the community. And we'd say, okay, look, we want to put so-and-so in office because we, you know, we want to get permits to build up our community. We want to um, clean up the parks. We want to add these programs for the youth. Like uh, Brother Bill Chizadek says, well, hey, where, where's the uh, your old folks' home that you built for your um Elderly in your community to make they to make sure they have a quality life once they become elderly, and you know what's going on. Who who we supposed to care for each other? It's it's no one's uh, responsibility. It's not white people's responsibility to make sure the black family unit or the black community has everything it needs to be a surviving, uh, uh, I mean, a, a striving community. It's not their responsibility. It's ours, meaning our mindset, meaning you produce what your mindset is on. So if your mindset is not on building a better neighborhood for the children and the elderly, it's not going to happen. And that's for everybody that's in there. Or, or if that knowledge isn't passed down from generations or you're not studying or if you don't see the need, it's just not going to happen. Because co- a collective, uh, united community wants to see the community grow as a reflection of them. The community to grow as a reflection of their inner being, their mindset, their thoughts, what they visualize, you know, and then you produce that right up out of your mind. You don't go and just sit on your hands and, you know, watch things tear apart and, you know, you so busy. I don't know if it's infighting or you caught up in a low frequency vibration of music uh, did the gang life overcome the community? Uh, did these uh, television shows and movies that they put out, and were they still putting black people in a degrading role? And the frustration, uh, economic, uh, um, economic depravity. Um, uh, I don't want to say lack of education because you have the internet; you can Google anything and learn. But it, it's so much. It's so, uh, uh, when I say infighting, I mean as far as male and female fighting against each other that, that's not studying the uh, science of, of mating on how to pick a, a, a woman to grow beautiful children and where you all on the, on the same energy wave to where you all are building something out of a positive spirit. Uh, to produce something for your children so they can grow on and be productive members of society. Um, all of that counts, man. All of that counts. Um, or, or, or are we following? I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's so much, man. It's so much. It's, you know, and, and we in a day and time to where we have to put things in this proper perspective because some people may take that, um, Offensive, you know, meaning, meaning, wow, man, (laughs) meaning if you have a church, but the homosexual community is running the church, 
then it's going to produce what it's going to produce. If you have the community, black community, and lesbians and homosexuals are running the community, then you have what you have. And I'm not politically correct where I got to say, uh, I'm not I'm not degrading the LGBTQ community. No, that's that's not that's not what I'm saying. So let me explain what I'm saying. If you if you're um uh, let's say sixty five on down to let's say thirty five, right? You remember a time where uh the seventies were you know, winding down the eighties, it was black power, black pride. You had black families um, uh, setting up gold standards, setting up directions in the way that they wanted the community to go, and that was the head. And so, at the, at one at that point, close knit community, uh, black schools, uh, the the well, I don't care what high school, I don't care if it's TSU, Prairie View, uh, Alcorn State. Uh, you, you just name it. The um, you had the black queen and the king. Uh, you know, uh, engineers talking about doing businesses. It was said loud and black and I'm proud. It, we was rolling. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, we had to because there was no reverse integration at the time. White folks weren't even trying to come up in the black community. They thought they was like, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to send some drugs in, in all their communities. We're going to send some guns in the communities because black folks ain't making guns. How they wind up in the hood? They ain't traveling outside getting guns. How the drugs wind up in the communities? Like I said, we ain't got no planes and boats bringing them in the hood. So everybody know this story, right? Okay. And so it's like, okay, look, we're going to drop the guns. We're going to drop the drugs. And we're going to give it like 15, 20 years. They're going to they gonna be on dope. They're going to damn near kill each other off. We can move in and take this property back. Right. But at the time, you had strong black men, women said, nah, we we, we fighting against drugs. They're late, man. We got to work together. Look, you know, you're trying to get paid, make your money, but look, we can't tap our community. Hey, look here, now. Go cut your grass. Look, get these bottles out the goddamn yard. Put the forties in the trash. Stop the bullshit. Let's, we got to clean up. We got to clean up. You know, we fight and we fight. That generation started getting older. They left it to the youth. Uh, video games, they playing the games all day long. Things are changing. The, the frequency of the music kind of change, and so what I'm saying is, in, in my you had the gay community, but it wasn't out yet as it is today. Is what I'm saying. It was sub- subdued uh, or secluded. I should say a better word. It was secluded. Uh, it wasn't out. So you know, you had a different mindset uh, for a different, uh, which produced a different type of leadership. Now I'm noticing that the gay community is more vocal now. They're out and they're taking roles and roles today that they wasn't uh, black gay, which that they were discriminated against. Let's say uh, thirty years ago, twenty years ago, fifteen years ago, right? Uh, the meaning you can walk in the church and you wouldn't see any, or you wouldn't know because it, it wouldn't open. You can go to church today, you see, you know, even though you always had them suspects in the choir, but now it's just out. They run in the choir, they're in the, you know, okay, whatever. That's where it's at today. And so we're saying, wow, okay, well, look, Pastor, which way are you, what's the direction you're going with this? What direction? Are, or or is it we got to a, a point where it's just 100% of, of what you put in the collection plate? You know, I don't. I don't know. I'm. I mean, these questions has to be answered, and don't take this as oh, he got he bashing the uh, gay community. No, not at all. It's not. They don't even. It's not about that. I'm simply saying. I'm simply saying that um, out of the mindset of where you at, that's what you're promoting, and that's what you see, and that's what you create. That's your topic. That's where your heart is at. That's what you. That's what you. That's your expression. And so I'm saying that that is a new expression that's on the table to today versus what the expression was 
35, 30, 20 years ago. You get what I'm saying? Okay, there we go. Now, what are leaders going to do? They in the quagmire. Look here. Homosexual community has money. We don't want to offend them. We need money to do this here because I got a lifestyle I got to lead. So, you know, what's going on? I can't stand up in uh, this part of the Bible. I can't teach out because I don't want to offend one side. And yet, and, it's, and I'm saying that the situation that has been created is it's like a, a Mexican standoff. But at the same time, while the while the decision or the answer is unclear, black folks are suffering. That's the bottom line. They build they they reintegrating and building these high rises. They coming back in the community. And I'm not saying they like, oh man, they they taking over. No, I'm not saying this. It's no fault. It's no fault. To, to white folks coming back into the black neighborhood because when black people integrated into white neighborhoods, white folks didn't want black folks in, the, in into their communities. They fought like here. They put up all kind of, uh, like you put up a, a for sale sign and a black person come and look at that sign in that house. You As soon as you drive off, they snatch that sign out of the yard. I mean, they, they had all kind of tactics to show you that they did not want you in their neighborhood. What made it their neighborhood? Because they was the majority race in that neighborhood. They didn't own it. It's the city owned the streets and you know what not. But since they were the majority there, they had the majority vote in their community. The, uh, homeowners, that was their community and they worked together to keep minorities out. But now that they want to Reverse integration and come back into the black community. Black people are not seeing them white folks go looking at these houses. They ain't snatching up uh, real estate signs. They not saying look putting. They not painting uh, signs on uh, on when white folks move in. Paint signs on signs on the side of their house saying we don't want you here, cracker ass cracker. They're not saying anything like that. They not uh they not burning a a, a whip or a cross or a, you know what I'm saying in their yard. Protesting, black folks not doing that. Now when when black people wanted to move in white neighborhoods and and integrate, they cut all kind of hell. White folks want to go in the black neighborhoods. Well, come on in, sir. Come on, hot, good in our DNA. I mean, they, I mean, we can go over examples of hanging, mutilation, uh, I mean, Jim Crow, I mean, all kind of things that we can put on the table as actual facts. What was the, even this, the Emmett Till grave site today in 2019, I mean, it's ridiculous. And we still will say, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. And then as soon as we let them in, they start working on moving us out. And all we will say is, we let y'all in and y'all going to do us like that. Good God. And that's it. <laughs> that, that, look, that's about the gist of it, you know. So, hey, man. It is what it is, but we just discussing it. I ain't. I'm not trying to offend anybody. Uh, Shots break. They're gonna take me away, set me free. Now, 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 now. I see black birds is coming for me. Yeah. Take me away. Set me free. Now, 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 now. Set me free. 